is Your Health, a podcast of the Integrated Health and Social Services University Network for West Central Montreal. Hello and welcome to Your Health. I'm Barry Morgan. Are you planning on having a baby? When it comes to having children, parents try to be as prepared as possible. But what should you do to be prepared and what should you not do? Well, there's a lot that goes into preconception planning. And with us is Dr. Judy Hagshi, family doctor at the Jewish General Hospital, member of CS West Central Montreal. Dr. Hagshi specializes in low-risk obstetrics. Welcome and thank you, first of all, for your time. Thank you. So when someone is planning on having a baby, would it make sense to begin by learning as much as they can about their own medical history? That would seem to make sense. Yes, Barry, that actually does make sense. It's important for them to learn as much as they can about their fertility information. So they need to get a history of all of the conceptions and pregnancies that they've had, and they should transmit that information to their doctor. And I need to specify that it's the fertility information for both partners, the mother and the father. Okay. They can give all this information to their doctor, and the doctor will use it in planning for a healthy pregnancy. So what does the doctor do with that actual information? It varies. It's it's important to know about um, if they've had any miscarriages. It's important to know if they've had any trouble getting pregnant. There's a lot of information that can help to plan a future pregnancy if you know what's happened in the past. The more detail, the better. It just makes a lot of sense. Exactly. Okay. And what should they know about their family's medical history? And here, uh, presuming on, on both sides as well. Exactly. So both men and women should know the family history of various pregnancies, so of their mothers, fathers, uh, grandmothers, aunts, uncles. It's important to know if there were any babies that were born with any genetic abnormalities, any heart defects. Another one that people don't often think about is if there were babies that were born that died in the first year of life. That can actually give a lot of clues about genetic problems that may occur in that family. Mm -hmm. Um, If anybody in their family had multiple miscarriages, so one or two miscarriages is okay, but if one of their family members had multiple miscarriages, again, that can give some clues. Genetic diseases can run run on both sides of the family. So yes, it is definitely important for the mother and the father to know their history. And um, one of the reasons for this is because there are special genetic tests that can be done, specifically when the mother and father are closely related. Sometimes first cousins get married. Sometimes people within a segregated uh, cultural group get married. And there are special genetic tests that can be done in those situations because certain genetic diseases run more in those kinds of families. Okay, tougher for adopted uh, people, people who were adopted perhaps, they if don't you're, maybe if have that. If you're adopted, you're not going to necessarily know this information. Sure, sure. And I guess, obviously, it goes without saying that if someone's parents have passed away, well, there's only so much information they can they can have at their, at their I guess disposal. have the conversation with your parents yeah. earlier on, sure. perhaps. understood. What is the all or nothing period? So the all or nothing period is the two weeks after conception before the woman typically even knows she's pregnant. So this is that two week period when the embryo is growing. And because women don't know that they're pregnant, they sometimes do things that they wouldn't have done if they knew they were pregnant. For example, the biggest is have some alcohol. Sometimes women might have a cigarette or two, maybe some other substances, but they, because they didn't know that they were pregnant, they don't necessarily take the precautions that they otherwise would. Mm -hmm. The good news is, is that it's what's called an all or nothing period. So if the substance or whatever they did affected the embryo in any way, typically the embryo dies, the woman has a period, may not have even known she was pregnant, and that's the end of that pregnancy. If it had an effect, it's all in, the, the embryo is affected, the embryo dies. Oh, okay. If the substance or the cigarette didn't have an effect at all, then it has no effect and she goes on to have a normal pregnancy. And of course, you have no way of knowing because the person is typically unaware. The, you would have no way of knowing if the assault, if the trauma, if the um, cigarette had an effect because you would just have a period. Okay. But the the reason it's important is because often women feel very guilty that they may have had a glass of alcohol or something. And the reassurance is, well, if the embryo survived and you're actually still pregnant, then that particular issue did not have an effect. Okay. How can someone optimize their health? In other words, really, what should they do? 
if they know that somebody, plus somebody's planning and they're having it, they want to have a child. They say, you know, they're coming to your office, Dr. Hagshi, what should I do? What should, you know, what, what are the best things to do? So one of the most important things to do that women often forget is to take folic acid prior to being pregnant. The magic number is one milligram of folic acid, and most prenatal vitamins have this, so you can check on the bottle if it's one milligram, but most prenatal vitamins have this. What women often forget is that they can take their folic acid even when they're on the pill. So that would be the three months prior to being pregnant. Mm. Even if you're still on the pill, you can still take the folic acid. They're not incompatible with each other. Okay. So the reason folic acid is so important is because it prevents neural tube defects like spina bifida. Oh, okay. The other thing that women should do is control any chronic medical illnesses that they have. Some women might have diabetes. Some women might have a thyroid issue or high blood pressure. So they want to make sure that it is well controlled and they should speak to their doctor to ensure that the medication they are on is safe in pregnancy because sometimes the doctor can actually switch them to a different medication that is safe in pregnancy and that can be done in advance of them actually becoming pregnant. Okay. Then there's the general stay healthy, eat a balanced diet, uh, try and exercise if you can and try and minimize your stress because all of those things will actually help to ensure a healthy pregnancy. Uh, the last thing that I want to say, because we get this question all the time, is about caffeine. The good news is that one to two cups of coffee, even when you are pregnant, so for sure when you're trying to get pregnant, are actually perfectly fine. Okay. You do not have to give up your caffeine. Okay. Very good. So uh, decaf doesn't have to be the word of the day all the time. Exactly. Okay. That's very good. Medication. Well, we talked about certain things to avoid already. You touched on alcohol, for instance. Maybe we should dive a little deeper into certain things that people really shouldn't do. So at least once you know you're pregnant, um, taking uh, away the all or nothing period. So once you actually do know you're pregnant, the three things to absolutely avoid, because we really don't know if any of these are safe, is alcohol, okay. smoking, and cannabis. We have to include cannabis now because it is on the rise. So once you become pregnant, you are best to just absolutely avoid all three of them. The other thing that a lot of women do know, but in case they don't, is to stop changing the litter box of the cat. Uh, once you're trying to be pregnant, uh -huh. or obviously once you are pregnant, get your partner to do that. <laughs> um, and That's what not, a partner's for. I, I guess so. <laughs> and do not participate in hot yoga. Again, while trying to get pregnant and in that, those first three months, hot yoga can have an effect. After those first three months, it's a different story. You can speak to your doctor, but while trying to get pregnant and, at, and early on in the pregnancy, you should avoid hot yoga. So those are the big ones. What about a hot tub? I mean, can, Same thing, same actually. Thing, yeah. uh, any hot tub, anything that can really raise the core body temperature. Any foods to avoid, maybe? We say to avoid uh, raw fish. Like anything sushi, that, Like sushi, yeah. yeah. Anything that can give you like a significant um, gastrointestinal illness that could... Uh, make you vomit and die and have a lot of diarrhea I that see, might I make see. you quite ill. What about so, so you, you talked about the obvious ones, smoking and alcohol and things like that. But what if it's is there a shock to the system? Say if a woman is a smoker and she just stops or tries to stop right away once she learns she's pregnant. Women are actually usually very motivated to stop smoking once they're pregnant. Which makes sense. Yeah. Uh, they often end up quitting cold turkey, all of the withdrawal effects. I don't know if they're just modified by the pregnancy, but all of the withdrawal effects, typically they tolerate them quite well. We talked about mainly planned pregnancies. Of course, there are plenty of unplanned pregnancies, not to suggest these are unwanted children, but they are unplanned and it happens quite often. In fact, there are statistics in both uh, Canada and the U.S. that say that as many as 50% of pregnancies are unplanned. Well, so it go. is uh, al almost the norm. Very common, very common. But in a case of somebody who's unplanned so or didn't plan the pregnancy, obviously they didn't come to you, let's say a few months beforehand, they learn they're pregnant. Can they catch up, so to speak, on some of the advice that you've shared with us? Well, one important thing would be to start full folic acid immediately. You don't need a prescription for it. You can walk into any pharmacy and pick up a multivite or specifically a prenatal vitamin mm -hmm. with folic acid. And then I would say try to get to see your doctor as soon as possible so that they can make the modifications as we discussed above. But depending on how, how far into the pregnancy you are, there are some tests, blood tests, genetic tests that need to be done quite early on in the pregnancy. So you're going to want to see your physician, hopefully the person who's ultimately taking care of your pregnancy, as soon as possible. Typically, somebody would know they're pregnant, I guess, within six to eight weeks. Does that make sense? T typically, yes. Okay. So is it fair to say that 
uh, even though somebody didn't necessarily know for perhaps two months, there's still plenty of time to go see your physician and take care of yourself the way you would if, if you knew that you were, if you had in fact planned the pregnancy. Yes, exactly. Okay. How many babies have you uh, delivered or? Uh... I've estimated about 2,000. Oh, that's a lot of babies. There is one more thing that I wanted to speak about, yeah. and that is specifically antidepressant medication. Oh, okay. Because a lot of women are on antidepressants prior to pregnancy, and they feel that they should stop taking it when they become pregnant. And that isn't true at all. Antidepressants are actually very safe in pregnancy. You can speak to your doctor about which are the safest ones, but typically they are considered to be very safe in pregnancy. And in fact, studies show that it's better for a woman to be on the antidepressant and to actually have uh, her mood stabilized throughout her pregnancy. And that makes her so much more prepared when the baby comes along. Makes sense. Makes so a lot do of not sense. feel guilty and stop your antidepressant. It's much better to stay on it. Dr. Hagshi, thank you very much for your time and all your terrific advice as well. Thank you very much, Barry. Dr. Judy Hagshi is a family doctor at the Jewish General Hospital, member of CIUS West Central Montreal, and she specializes in low-risk obstetrics. And that's it for this edition of Your Health. Thank you for your time. To hear our previous programs, you could find them at podcast.ciuswestcentral.ca. That's podcast.ciuswestcentral.ca. Let us know if there's a topic you'd like us to explore in the future. I'm Barry Morgan. Until next time. You've been listening to Your Health, a podcast of the Integrated Health and Social Services University Network for West Central Montreal. 